there, Belinda and Jessica. Uh, really lovely to do this for you, Jessica. Oops, sorry, I'll take my band off. Uh, so we've got David on the table. He's a holistic counsellor, so I'm sure there'll be some input from him as well as we go through this surrogate balance for you. So let's uh, let's kick in. He's been reading through, and anyway, we'll see what shows I'll up for you. Some information on the school, the bully stuff at school. Yeah, so some information will be coming through for you from him as well that may or may not be helpful. Don't, I'm not sure how far you've delved into things so far. Yeah, we'll do the balance. Let's do the balance. <clears throat> and see what shows up. <clears throat> and our little Teddy is here today, so we may or may not get interrupted at some stage with him, but that's okay. He's pretty, he's pretty jolly good. So I sort of wrote down some of the main things so I can sort of muscle test Blisters. through them. Blisters. Oh, the bit of paper. Oh, yeah. Right. Beautiful. <clears throat> Actually, that's cool. Okay, so so again, we'll just sort of, what I'm going to do, stack in all this information. Jessica. I'm 100% Jessica. I'm now 100% Jessica. Let's see. Okay, and hold. Okay, we're in. Without stacking it in, say, I am now David. I'm now David. And hold. Mm. No. Say, I am now Jessica. I'm now Jessica. And hold. Yep, so we're in. <laughs> um, just asking the universe if there's any balance uh, energy that goes through to Jessica that would be beneficial for David's energy. We ask that it easily and beautifully be um, oh. accepted in this body as the sacred vessel. Okay. I'm now 100% Jessica. Okay, so where do we need to start with this little body? Okay, so we need to start face down or face up. So face up. Okay. So uh, some structural stuff. I know there was a bunch of structural stuff um, that was mentioned, so we might go in and do a bit of a structural uh, assessment, sort of see what might be going on. So flexor hallucis longus, hold. That one's okay, hold. That's okay. Perineus brevis, hold. Perineus brevis, hold. That's okay. Tibials, hold. Tibials, hold. That's interesting. So they're, they're like doing okay because they relate to... Uh, you know, stress and blame and guilt and anxiety and stuff like that. So it might be more energetic, which will be interesting. Or we might not be there yet in the balance. I'm going to put my little fingers on the bottom of the feet. These are foot proprioceptors. They're okay. Underneath the feet. Underneath the feet. No, not where we need to start. So let's go and have a squiz. So do we need to do shoulders? Do we need to do anything structural at this point? Okay, no. Okay. Do we need to start with survival, deep survival, hidden deep survival? Yes, we do. Hold. So, right, so that one's deep survival. Sorry, that one's survival switching. It didn't hold, which means there's been one-off incidences that have created trauma in the nervous system. Hold. That one's deep survival. It also didn't hold. That is a long-term stress where the nervous system has gone, life is going to be stressful and traumatic forever. And hold. Uh, that one's okay. So we've got survival switching and deep survival switching, both in the unconscious brain, both as a pattern in the unconscious brain, keeping your body alert for stress from now to eternity. So we need to calm that down. Do we need to do the celestial circuit? Do we have a leaking chiron point? No and no at this point. Okay, so do we need to target any of this specifically? Not at this point. Okay, so let's go in and sort out those survival patterns. So they are stored in the sensory nervous system. So that part of the nervous system that doesn't want to see anything, doesn't want to hear anything, certainly doesn't want to feel what it's like going to school and being bullied or picked on or anything like that. Uh, so it's the sensory nervous system that's on high alert all the time, avoiding more information than what it can cope with. 
Okay, so the first little area showing up is the anterior cingulate gyrus. This is the one, it's a nuclei in the brain that is to do with, hold out for me, mm. your unconscious brain wanting to be perfect under stress. And then when you're not perfect under stress, it traumatizes yourself. So then we pick on ourselves about not being perfect. So there's an old pain and punishment circuit where because something happened where you weren't perfect under stress, it's created a trauma in your nervous system. In Jessica. In Jessica, absolutely. This can set up things like obsessive, uh, obsessive compulsions. So like people who have to tidy their room before they can leave the house or kids who have to know they're perfect before they go and do an exam. Perfectionism or, at school too. Yeah, perfectionism. Perfectionism in the council literature. Well, that can be part of the anterior cingulate commerce. One of my friends was a teacher and she would not be able to mark her assignments until she had things like the microwave cleaned out and washed, the oven cleaned out and washed. And until she had all of those things perfect, then she could sit down and mark the assignments. She had a lot of trauma and abuse as a child. Okay. So let's see what shows up next, Jessica. Okay. So the next little area showing up is the orbitofrontal cortex. So this is an area to do with conflict. You don't want to go to school because it's traumatic. Your parents want you to go to school. There's this whole thing going on constantly, but this area is about conflict. Will I, won't I, should I, shouldn't I? You know, so all of that sort of thing. So let's go in and work that one out. And hold out. And hold up. Okay. Yeah, so that little guy is... Uh, so conflict is huge and it's easier to avoid conflict sometimes. So rather than going to school and putting up with that stuff, the way to avoid it is by avoiding going to school. But it doesn't build our resilience in life. So this is fear, threat, danger. So there's fear, threat, danger in relation to conflict. So again, the easy way to avoid that is just by avoiding whatever the stress is. Which is going quiet, I think. I think it was written there. Yeah, so by being silent and by not communicating and switching off, yeah, absolutely. That's the, it's a nice, calming way to avoid that conflict. Wow. It can become a maladaption over time. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Like, um, like, escapism. Yes. So subclossal gyrus is showing up next. So this one's to do with suppression of rage and anger. And when we suppress it a lot, we become depressed and unfocused and just um, sad, lack of confidence in our daily life. And that's escape, submission, freeze. So your brain is getting into a spot where it wants to avoid anger as well. So again, by being selectively choosing who you speak to and only speaking to people at home, it's creating an environment where, again, if you speak your truth, you're not heard. You're not hurt, sorry. Hurt or hurt. Hurt. So it's easier to avoid Horror speaking. Because she only hangs out with the family group. Yeah, the family's her safe place. Mm. Okay, now the reticular activating system is showing up. So this is in the, it's in underneath the brain stem and it controls what hormones your body releases on a day-to-day -day basis under stress. So let's go have a look. Releases all switches off. Right, so the first one showing up is noradrenaline. So noradrenaline is like a long-term stress hormone. So it's releasing it because it's going... I'm going to be stressed for the rest of my life, so let's just keep this little layer of noradrenaline going all day, every day. Long term, that can, of course, lead to high blood pressure and syndrome X and issues with cortisol problems, lots of stress and trauma, you know, all sorts of things. But So calming it down is just awesome. 
So that's the noradrenaline. What's the second coordinate? Yeah, okay. And that's creating vigilance. So it's creating vigilance in the nervous system. Yeah, vigilance is exhausting. Vigilance is very exhausting. Do you know the story about fight, flight, freeze with the zebras? Have you heard that? Me? No. So we know what fight and flight is. Everyone talks about them. Fight, fright, flees, and fawn as well. Yeah, fawn. Which but the be, freeze which one. Could be part of a solid thing. Yeah. Oh so the one with freeze is, and David Attenborough was talking about this one day, he had this footage where there were these zebras. And uh, I can't remember whether it was lions or tigers or something like that, but something was attacking them. And one of their defence mechanisms is freeze. So if the lion jumps on them and they pretend to be dead, I think it was lions, and they pretend to be dead, the lioness, who's the, who's the um, hunter actually, the lioness then leaves the zebra thinking it's dead and goes back to Mr. Lion and says, hey, I've got you a zebra for lunch. And by the time the lion comes back, sometimes because the zebra's done this freeze and the lioness sort of gives it a bit of a shake, assumes it's dead and off it goes. So it showed this footage of this zebra going into freeze and then, uh, and then the lioness went off and by the time she came back, the zebra had got up, shaken itself off and ran away. But then it showed the zebra had used so much energy going through that process of freeze that it slept for a couple of days. So yes, it's exhausting. So that could be fawn as well. Tell me about fawn. Well, the problem is in the, in the psychology literature, it's a bit, um, it can be dissociating, and that's a bit complicated to describe, but it can cause low blood pressure. Right. And, and it was just the thing with the leg being numb and like, might be good to check your blood pressure. Yeah, so there's a, a thing. Belinda has uh, Jessica's blood pressure being checked lately. I've got a person that I know who, within different environments, a complex trauma environment, and they've got really low blood pressure because they kind of dissociated through their childhood. Anyway, that's and a bit complicated. <clears throat> so the reticular activating system, something about that being in long-term stress and making the body vigilant all the time, is blowing the base chakra. So I'm just seeing whether it's in first, second or third layer of stress and it's third. So, so the base, no, it wasn't a great hold. So the third layer of stress, it means that the base chakra, which is to do with feeling grounded and safe and secure, it's totally blown. So everything we can do to pick up the base chakra, the better. And it's the things like whatever you can do, whatever you can do, Jessica, whether it's breathing techniques, whether it's getting out in nature, whether it's sitting under a tree, sitting on the beach, sitting on mountains, whether it's, uh, you know, say all the grounding things. Lots of good info on the internet about grounding techniques. Yeah, there's lots of good grounding stuff out there. But if you've, you know, potentially, you know, hard David... Been, hard been kids a little... Yeah. ...to do anything disciplined. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm not good at breathing techniques. <laughs> but drinking plenty of water and purified water, trying to keep you really nice, good good fats in your diet, you know, so that you're constantly metabolizing your fats, which helps to your neurons to function better. I've got a great little visual that someone sent me this week of how much of the fat we require for hormones, for our nerves, for our brain. It's a really good visual. And interesting with uh, being a cold frog, Jessica, because there could be something, you know, the metabolism, your mitochondria, your cellular energy just isn't pumping in as well as it could potentially. And that's part of what the matured bitter hops extract does. It helps to increase thermogenesis. But so do things like uh, ginger and uh, cayenne and lot like bitter extracts. But what I love about the matured bitter hops extract is that it has no taste, no flavour, no smell. So it's easy. 
Okay, reticular activating system. Uh, so we're going back in there again. That's where we, now, base chakra, is it corrected? No, so we still need to do some more with the base chakra, but we need to get back into the reticular activating system for a minute. Right, so the first hormone showing up is acetylcholine, and I sort of joke that this is like the triple shot of coffee. <laughs> Nor adrenaline's like a one shot of coffee, adrenaline's like two shot of coffee, and uh, acetylcholine's like a triple shot of coffee. So the nervous system is constantly jolting out this energy to, to protect itself, to keep itself safe. Yeah, and what that's doing is keeping the brain focused. So what the brain is trying to do with that triple shot of coffee, the acetylcholine, is trying to allow your brain to focus on the next thing that could potentially go wrong. So it's when we can't let things out of our brain. It's there all the time. It also takes a lot of energy to suppress negative nutrients. It does. So David said it takes a lot of energy to suppress negative memories. If there was bullying in that type of Oh, yeah, with bullying and all that sort of jazz. The little kids can't really process. I don't know how old Jessica is. Right. Okay, so the next area showing up, so once again, is there still more to do with the base chakra? Yes, there is. So this is still part of the base chakra component. But where we need to go now is into the parasympathetic nervous system. So we'll go in through the dorsal vagal nucleus of the medulla, as you do. And hold. Nothing. Not happy. <laughs> So the sympathetic nervous system, when it's up and running, it's activating fight and flight and freeze and fawn. So sympathetic's the one we can control, isn't it? No, no, no. It's the stress one. So the back of the brain one. What's oh, well, one? You're, no, you're probably talking about breathing exercises where you can control it. Mm. So sorry, different thought process. So yes, you probably can with your techniques. Now, what's it better than the logical brain and the other more, what is it, sympathetic and parasympathetic? Yeah, so the parasympathetic nervous system, which is, so I want to see which organs are not working to calm down the parasympathetic, ner or to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, because there's a balancing technique with them. Mm -hmm. So let's go in and see which organs aren't balanced in relation to your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Okay. So brain, brain, now we're in the brain anyway, but the... General conscious brain, that's not showing up, which is nice. Lung. So lungs showing up. So there was something about coughing under stress. Mm. So let's pop in. Right? Yeah. So let's pop in lungs. Now, lungs can be about grief, guilt, regret as well. So when we've been picked on or bullied or have had a bad experience, part of our brain goes, I wish that had never happened. So let's uh, pop in the lung energy muscles. And lungs have to do with blood. Mm. And we release toxins through the lungs. Hold. That one's okay. This one, hold up for me. Ah, that one. So that's a deltoid. Hold up. It's also a lung muscle. Then I'm going to... No, neither of them were good. And then I'm going to check the diaphragm as well. So just pushing on the xiphoid process in here down towards the pubic bone. And hold. No. Mm. So we've got three out of five of the lung muscles not functional. So one of the things that you can do any time that you're coughing from the inside of your shoulder blade, just roll, pull your hand down to your thumb. And that helps to improve the meridian energy for your lungs. And breathe down into your stomach, breathe down. Yeah, and breathe, breathe, if she can, if, if she, she can. can. So I did, um, I, uh, I did singing lessons a few years ago, not because I want to be a singer, but because occasionally I'd be in silly plays and there'd be fun songs and, and I was, I'm a great chorus singer put me in a chorus with 30 people or even five people i'm absolutely fine put me on my own my throat constricts and i can't do it so i did singing lessons for a term which was maybe 10 or 12 
lessons and it was funny because I could not belly breathe to save myself. Whatever mm. she was telling me to do, I do the opposite of it. She said, it's like you're giving birth when you're breathing to sing, which was really interesting. And I had no idea what she was talking about. It's hard to change something that you're unaware of because it's so natural for me. Because all those muscles around the lungs, if you breathe into your stomach like this and then back up, you actually move the diaphragm and all those muscles that move the lungs. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Lots of videos online about belly breathing. Yeah, so when we can feel our breathing in our rib cage, that's the wrong sort of breathing. We need to be feeling our breathing in our belly. So a lot of people can feel their breathing in up underneath here. Yeah, most people breathe up. Yeah. And when you yawn, like breathing down, when you yawn, it fills the top parts up. Anyway, that's why. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Okay, let's check. So, I've, uh, so there was escape submission freeze in relation to lung energy. So, so when you're in an escape, everything is, again, it's tightened in the lungs. So you'll only be breathing in that upper third of the lungs. Your lungs won't be detoxing properly. Hold up for me. Beautiful. Hold up you. for me. Breathe through your nose too. And hold up for me. Okay, so we've got those ones up and running. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so again, uh, central governing lung, lung, sex, sex, heart, stomach, so stomach energy. Now, another thing was the allergies when you're under stress. Mm. So the stomach is one of the areas where we, we release an enzyme called DAO, diamine oxidase. And if we don't have enough of that DAO in the gut, uh, and I think it's predominantly stomach and small intestine, then we don't get the histamines off the gut lining and it makes us more likely to go into allergies quickly. So oh, stomach energy, hold up for me, <clears throat> hold up for me. Now because of the allergies as well, I'll just check your neck muscles because they can relate to the sinuses. Oh, yeah. Put them over there. No, no, me. relax, lift and hold up for me, hold. Mm -hmm. That one's good and at 10 degrees and hold up for me. At 45 degrees and hold up for me. Mm. 10 really degrees, holding? hold up. 45 and hold up. Mm. No, they're actually pretty good. So it's predominantly the stomach itself, which yeah, is fine. Right, I get it. Yeah, so histamine builds up in the body. Mm. So we can eat foods high in histamine, which very is... Point there, right, there. so that's very sore under the left. So that's an area that sends lymph Ooh. to and from the stomach energy. And the stomach energy is about an imbalance of sympathy and empathy. So if you've been bullied at school, you go to school, you're picked on, you're not getting that empathy and sympathy you need. Uh, luckily, your parents understand what you've been going through, but it's tough all round, you know, when this is going on. Because how do you fight the system? You know, oh, anyway, that's well, not a discussion hard. for kids. And hold up for me. Yeah, it's tough. It's hard. Hold. Beautiful. People aren't very good at people who are different either. Yeah. Okay. So again, let's go have a look. So, and that's where uh, Belinda Holistic Counseling can help because even getting some techniques by a counsellor to help you with the school system, you know, getting some things in place. I'll send some information on the bullying just to get it in context. Yeah. So it could, it could cause uh, being bullied can cause all sorts of things yeah. as well. Up to people's surprise. Yeah. So just about all of Jessica's symptoms can be caused from bullying, for example. So back to the parasympathetic nervous system. So central governing lung, lung, circ, sex, heart, stomach. The body keeps the score. Large, okay, so large intestine showed up. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was the leg pain and things like that. Large intestine energy. So if our large intestine is bloating, you know, if we've got any of the bloating, burping, belching, wind, flatulence, diarrhea, constipation, we can have bloating. That can be putting pressure on the nerves on the inside of the spine that can mess with our blood supply and our nerve supply going from the lower back to the rest of the body. So I'm going to do two muscles that relate to the large intestine. One of them is the fascia lata on the outside of the leg. So up, out, facing down and in and hold up for me, David. And no, nah, nothing. <laughs> Hold up for me, David. No. Nah. Okay. So that's the first large intestine muscle. And this again is about grief, guilt, regret. 
And this is externalized, which means it's palpable. People can feel it from your little, you know, heart and soul. So now I want you to hold on to the edges of the table. Mm -hmm. So this is a test for the lower back to see how strong that core strength is for you. So hold out, don't let me pull to the right. It's not bad, there's actually some good energy there, but it's 50% unlocking. And hold out on the right, yeah, no, nah, okay. So the large intestine, grief, guilt, regret. So let's pick up that. Yeah, I know there's lots of stuff that in hindsight, you know, I still get a inkling of from my school years, things I wish I had never done and, you know, but it's, but you know, the funny thing is when you do recover from it and when you do feel, feel more resilient about it and you start getting less of a uh, emotional charge when you think about things, that's a sign that your brain nerves are growing and strengthening. Yeah, so the large intestine energy again with the amygdala, it's locked into pain and punishment circuitry. Mm. So that amygdala is pretty uh, primal. Amygdala is very primal. So it's not really and, conscious brain. No, 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 it's in, the, it's in the subconscious middle brain. And this is something, uh, Jessica, so, and this is, I think it's a way to forgive yourself. The amygdala wants you to be safe all day, every day. So when we have any situation in life, where our nervous system is coming up against something that's challenging or stressful, our brain has got one five hundredth of a second to respond logically, clearly, comfortably to that situation. And if not, your amygdala is activated within one five hundredth of a second. So the it's different things that I look at for this within these little circuits it can switch off the pleasure reward center so you don't enjoy things. It can pop you into fear, threat, danger. It can pop you into an old pain and punishment circuit. It can make you want to escape, you know, or submit to something or freeze. It can make you angry, you know, so uh, rage, anger, frustration. So they're the main ones that I do all the time in this circuitry. Uh, and each time I'm doing it, I'm waiting until they pulse which means that we've got some energy moving in there. So we're moving the energy in the brain so that the brain becomes more resilient. So where was that large intestine? Okay, so we said more to do on the large intestine. Okay, so let's go back and recheck. So fascia lata, hold up. Perfect, rock solid, Jessica. Hold up for me. <laughs> there was nothing I really, before. I really thought it was me before. Did you hear that? David thought it was him before, so he's surprised it's locking. I'm surprised they're locking. Okay, so holding on These to the... These ones will be more surprised. Hold out, don't let me push left. Rock solid. That's so weird. Don't let me pull right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it when my surrogate gets a surprise. Hey there, little teddy boy. You want to say, hello, Jessica. Hello, Belinda. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Belinda. How can I help you, darling? Um, is there a half crumpet? There aren't any crumpets left. Oh, you're hungry. Can you go get yourself a cheese stick? Okay. okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> He's a little sweetie. Holidays. Okay. Holidays, yeah, holidays here in Australia, in Queensland particularly. Okay, so now let's go back and have a look again. So central governing lung, lung, circsex heart, stomach, large intestine. Now, uh, so bladder, small intestine, triple heater. Triple heater is showing up. Now, triple heater is the combination of the thyroid, which is to do with metabolism, the adrenals, which is to do with stress, and the immune system, which is all the allergies and stuff. So now at this point, let's go back and recheck that flexahelicus longus. Hold. That did not show up earlier on. And here we are in the parasympathetic, oh, only on one side. Interesting. Oh, that helps with, you know, 80%. Yeah, okay, so it's about 80%, not too, not too hideous. Let's check the thyroid, so I'll get you to do this, David. So double your arms. Hold back, don't let me come forward. No, that's okay. Hold back, don't let me come forward. Need some help?
I think I could do that still. What? I think. And then, uh, oh, if I want some more fairy fish. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Hold. Okay. Here we are. We're in the immune system. So, funnily enough. Oh. Part of, what time is it? It is 10.35. We've got two and a half hours till your friend comes. So, so, that didn't help. so the immune system didn't help. So out of the immune, the thyroid, the adrenals and the immune, the immune is the worst, which is really interesting. Mm. So let's go in and pick that up and have a think about what we've got going on. So we know that, for example, when we are stressed, the brain is inflamed. We know that if there is... Uh, allergies and things and there's going to be issues with histamines and stuff so what I might do is first oh energy mismatch didn't show up I don't think okay so just pick it up in the in the clear and then we'll go and have a bit of a oh there was something else you said that made me think parasites so let I can't remember what it was but let's just go have a squeeze so parasites and parasitic infections and hold yeah hold hold Nothing. So parasites. Oh, I can't even hold them. Up. Something going on. No there's, mismatch. Yeah, there's no energy mismatch, but the immune system doesn't know what to do with parasites. So parasites are one of the things in the body. They don't sort themselves out on their own. If we have things like, you know, drugs that fight bacteria or viruses, that's fine for those, but it, they actually allow parasites to grow. Can you go off and get them after travelling and... Yeah, so there's lots of things. Yeah, anytime our microbiome is upset and stress messes with all of this stuff. And of course, there's energetic parasites out there on the planet as well. <laughs> parasites. Hold. 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 Okay, so let's check histam histamines. Hold. So histamines mm. build up in the gut, the brain, the uterus, and the spine. Mm. Hold. Nothing. Hold. Nothing. Hold. Hold. So definitely histamine as well. So the body yeah, doesn't nothing. know what to do with it. And as women, histamine builds up in the gut, the brain, the uterus, and the spine, and it attracts electromagnetic frequencies. So when we're around things like 3G, 4G, 5G towers, when we've got our modems on all the time, when we've got our GPSs on all the time, we're actually attracting electromagnetic radiation into our body uh, because the histamines and EMFs attract each other. And then the EMFs build up in the gut, the brain, the testicles and the spine. So it's a delightful little combo. Okay, so histamines. And hold, 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 hold. Beautiful. Okay, so let's go have a squeeze. So histamines and um, what else? So let's just ask, because you've got lots of little inflammatory stuff going on in the body, what I'll ask your immune system in, in relation to any all in inflammatory cytokines, inflammatory hormones, inflammatory enzymes so let's just see if your immune system knows what to do with them and it's saying nope i don't know what to do oh, yes yeah, okay so it's not completely so dreadful completely. ah but with this one there's an energy mismatch it's our first energy mismatch inflammation isn't always bad we need inflammation so inflammatory enzymes to break down foods in our stomach we need inflammatory enzymes to break down cancer cells in our body. So inflammation isn't always bad. It's when it gets out of balance in the body that it's a problem. How's your, to how's your foot healing? Oh, the toe? Yeah. Okay, good. Been a lot of work. So that was inflammatory cytokines, enzymes, hormones. And hold. 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 I'm thirsty. You can get yourself water, sweetie. 
I thought you had the water bottle out here. There's still some more apple juice. Um, apple, apple juice. After, after we finish here, you can have more apple juice. Okay. Okay. You can have there's water. A, there's two. There's, um, oh, you can have water now and apple juice when we finish. Okay. Okay. So we've got histamines, we've got inflammatory cytokines. Let's check stress hormones. So because it seems to be a very direct correlation for you when you're stressed or when you're coughing or when you're stressed. So anyway, let's check in relation to stress and stress hormones. Really specifically within your immune system. And hold. Yeah, okay. Hold. 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 <laughs> Interesting. And yeah. Effect. Really, real. What, what was that one? Stress and stress hormones messing with the immune system. All five in one. So the stress is often the top of the tree. So if there's stress going on, the whole body will go. None of that's as important as dealing with that stress. So the Which stress. Can thinking and... Yeah, it can be our thoughts. It can be our memories. It can be our, the way that we're talking. It can be what we're doing. Yeah, self-talk, self-abuse. Yeah. Well, life can be stressful. Life can be stressful. Because there's something about authority figures. Oh, yeah. There's a great flower essence called... Uh, Red Helmet Orchid. And I'll tell you a funny story about one of my sons... About 30 years ago or 25 years ago when I was learning kinesiology and I had one of my sons on the table and we were doing a balance for the other son who refused to be in here. And he was throwing a hissy fit out there. And it was funny because as I was working on one of my sons, red helmet orchid showed up and it's for people who hate abuse of, um, and authority. They hate authority figures and it's always because they've been traumatised by them. So it's not just some magical hatred we have of it. Anyway, so this, this, muscle te this muscle tested up. My son and I on the table, we were having a bit of a laugh. At that moment, the other son burst his head through the door and said, what are you doing to my brain? <laughs> Which is all very funny to me. You're doing a surrogate. I was doing a surrogate balance from one son to another. Anyway, so let's go and check stress and stress hormones. And hold, 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 hold. They're all locking now. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Anything else you can think of off the top of your head that might be going on with Jessica's? Oh, I think it's complex. And I think it's very there's complex. There's multiple causes. So. Yeah, absolutely. So now let's go in. Uh, so is there any more we need to pop into the immune system? So the so body's quite morrow? happy with that. Is there something about the morrow? Oh, right? the morrow will definitely be activated. Mm. Um, we probably need, yes. I'll send information on the morrow as well. Uh, Belinda and Jessica. So we need to send stuff about the morrow. We need to send stuff about, about ADHD and, bullying. and bullying. I need to send stuff about the matured hopper bitter extract. Okay, let's go have a look. Where are we? So Go back through these alarm points again. So this is where we were before. So the triple heater meridian is now saying it's okay. Gallbladder, liver, spleen, spleen, kidneys. They seem okay. So going back into periventricular survival system, is there any more to do in there? Is there more to do with the base chakra? So the base chakra is now showing up okay. So I'm going to stack that little combo in again. Base chakra plus adrenals, plus sphenoid bone. So it was in third stage stress to start with. That's locking and hold. That's unlocking. So the base chakra is nice and balanced now. Jessica, good, good, good. Now let's uh, go in and check that survival switching and deep survival. So survival switching, that's locking and deep survival and hold. That's nice. I'll make sure hidden deep survival hasn't... Um, come out to play hold it didn't show up before no that's beautiful okay so now okay so where do we need to go next so now i'll get 
our notes and see where we need to Okay, so what I might do, just because there's the physical sort of symptoms, um, even though it didn't show up structurally before, I'm going to put in some gates anyway. So because the adrenal uh, perineus brevis, they all sort of showed up okay before, but what I might do is check some big gates and things. So go beyond individual muscles and check some big stuff, so relaxing. So coming into the centre, it's pretty even, but the left side is a little higher, which means there's more um, tightness or tenseness on the left leg hip. Not, not a lot. It's only about a centimetre difference, but it's definitely higher on the left. She's having trouble with her left leg. Was it? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. So let's have a look. Fingers outstretched. Oh, look at this but the upper body is out by three or four centimetres and it's tighter on the left. So we've got tightness on the left shoulder, tightness on the left hip, which indicates that the body is in fight because that is left leg, left shoulder, both compressed, ready to go. So the nervous system is in a permanent fight state. So now let's check the gait. So I'm going to do left arm. Actually, I'll check legs and arms individually. Hold and hold, and hold, and hold, beautiful, hold, yep. yep, so they're all locking in the clear, now let's check left arm and right leg, and hold up for me, beautiful, now let's check left leg and right arm, and hold, oh. that's unlocking, so, and that is, oh, I tried. <laughs> I that is that. left flight is exhausted, now let's check left arm, left leg, and hold. That's rock solid. Right arm, right leg, hold. <laughs> so, so there's a couple of things out of balance. So there's some, there's some big stress in there in the gait. So the energy just isn't traveling through the body properly. Now, again, I'm gonna check those foot proprioceptors. Uh, now they're showing up. They did not show up earlier oh, on. I before. Yeah, so that now the feet aren't communicating with the body now that we've got the gates online. Let's again check these adrenals. No, they're okay. Hold, hold, beautiful. Okay, so and what about eighth chakra? Hold, hold. No, so the foot proprioceptors, and again, this is something you can do every day. It's basically with the bottom of your foot, you're pushing firmly out in every direction. And then you're twisting and pulling each of the feet, to or each of the toes of the feet. Good thing it feels really good. When it you do does it. feel really nice. Sorry about the little Teddy interruptions. Oh, it's, it's school holidays. Yeah. So are they tender? Do they see what's doing? Oh, it feels fantastic. Yeah. So it's a nice firm movement. I do, I do do firmly. Like it's not wussy, wussy, is it, David? Oh, it's really good. Yeah. Getting into the points in between the bones. And... Yeah. And then I twist and pull, you know, wriggle and pull each of the toes. And then the little points at the top of the foot between the toes, those are master neurolymphatic points. And they're often really sore. They can be very so, sore. On a lot of people. So reflexology might be something you could try locally to give you some TLC in that little nervous system of yours. Unless you do good massage, because it's pretty easy to do. To some do people want thought. some TLC as well. Yeah, but if it's too mild, you don't. Okay, and now this one I need to... Uh, the big toe over here is a bit uh, sore, so I'll be leaving the big toe alone on the yeah, left. Do it and get it by the side, it'll be all right. You don't want to miss out. It'll be okay. Just get on the side. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Huh? 
Yeah, they're very tall. Yeah. Okay, so little foot proprioceptors, bottom of the foot. Beautiful. Now with those gates online, I also want to check, because when we've got the arms and the leg combinations that are unlocking, quite often these little muscles on the inside of here are too tight as well because they are about protection too. So they're called pec minus, the pectoralis minor muscles. So check the one on the right, no, no. not happy. Uh, and hold. No, so neither of those are working either. And they're about protection. They're all about protection for the body. Isn't Which funny is funny how stress manifests in the body. Stress manifests in a million ways in the body. Yeah, and just the stuff we've got online with all of this gates, it's linked in with a deep pain and punishment circuit. So something in the past that has logged as a pain and punishment circuit. If it's, um, if it's um, you know, like consider ADHD or neurodiversity assessment, kids with that type of thing, they get, they get not punished, but they get told to focus 20 times more than normal kids. So yeah. they're, say, they're, normal kids will be, right, do this, do that, two times a day, whereas um, kids with ADHD will be 20 times a day. So they're getting an unusual level of uh, attention from the authority figures. Yeah. Just, just to, you know. Yeah. And that can be very uh, heartbreaking. But, you know, it just, I don't know how, how old or what, because you normally assess before 12. If you go down that road. Yeah, so again, I've just checked the uh, reticular activating systems just shown up again in relation to the gates and the energy underneath the gates. And again, the gates are out. So that's the way that we walk, the way that we move, the way that our arms and legs work in time and space. It's also the foot proprioceptors, which when they're not working properly, uh, we're not switching on 600 muscles of the body evenly. So, you know, that's why they're, they're so important. So what this is, again, with the reticular activating system is noradrenaline, again, blowing the base chakra. So again, all of those grounding things that we can do. Yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's so many things out there. There's a million things we can do for grounding. There's, um, you can do vagus nerve toning. There's a lot of videos on that. All sorts of breath work. Breathing through the nose and out. So, next one. So now, let's see, is there more to do with the gates? Okay, so either there's no more to do or we're jammed somewhere, so we'll just go and have a look at them again. So let's get the left arm, because I can't remember which ones. So left arm, right leg, hold up for me, beautiful. Left leg, right arm, hold up for me, beautiful. Left arm, left leg, hold up for me, beautiful. Right arm, right leg, hold up for me. Awesome. So they're all working now. Let's check these little pec minors in here. And hold. Yep, yeah, that's nice. And hold. So energetically, they're relaxed. And yeah. that's one of the big things to do, uh, Jessica, is keeping your shoulders back. Because when you lift your chin and you hold your shoulders back, energetically, your nervous system feels more confident. So if you're slouched down with your head down, you know, your arms crossed or on a phone all the time, that's an energetic decrease. It also affects the way your lungs are sitting too. Absolutely. No, it affects everything. So and having those shoulders back, chin up, you know, and making sure that you pr you uh, practice getting those shoulders back so that it becomes a normal practice for you. Let's check the gates down here with the feet. They're even now, so that gait has gone on the left. Because you've had pain down your legs, let's just check your femur bones. And hold, hold. No, they're beautiful. Good, good, good. But I've got them stacked in, so I'll quickly go and check if there's any amygdala stuff going on there. No, nope. excellent.
Right, so because there's been uh, a bit of bullying, what I might do is ask your body in relation to energy mismatch, in relation, okay, so I'm just going to turn on my circuit retaining mode. And then I'm just going to ask the body in relation to any and all bullying. In relation to any and all bullying. We'll see if there's an energy mismatch to it. Yes, mm -hmm. there is. So in relation to bullying, let's check the adrenals. Hold. Hold. They're okay. Survival. That's okay. Deep survival. That's okay. Hidden deep. That's okay. So we'll just go in and do the energy mismatch stuff. Because that is showing up. So in other words, your nervous system doesn't know what to do with your bullying. Yeah, you're yeah. Not so it. bullying. So in relation to bullying, your nervous system doesn't have a solution other than what you're currently doing, which is avoidance and not speaking and that sort of thing. So, And that's not, it, it's a solution, but it's not the best solution for you being able to live your happiest and most fun life. Okay, in relation to any and all bullying. Any and all bullying. Energy mismatch. Beautiful. Now I'm going to ask about, so I've got the circuit retaining mode on again. I'm going to ask around teachers. So I want you to feel in your heart of hearts that sadness or challenge or when, when teachers particularly are giving you a hard time. So I just want you to think about that for a moment. And hold. Yeah, so there's bullying, but now we've got teachers online and same. There's a big energy mismatch there in relation to teachers as well. They yeah. don't, I don't think some teachers realise the power they have. They probably do, and maybe some don't care, but I suspect they just don't know what they're doing long term to kids. Well, if it's ADHD, authoritarianism doesn't work whether it's from parenting or teachers. Yeah, one Authoritative of... Authoritative needs. Yeah. You know. One of our clients uh, has a bunch of grandkids, and a few of those grandkids, if there's any authority, authority issues, they just get out and walk out from the school. They go to the park, they climb up on a roof, <laughs> they sort of do whatever they need to do to get away, you know, they simply won't put up with it, which is really interesting. Everyone just wants to sort of fit in. Yeah, yeah, totally. Especially kids, all they want is to fit in as much as possible. Okay, so in relation to teachers, teacher challenges, teacher authoritarianism, teacher bullying, Perfect. and how beautiful. Yeah, right, now it was the right leg where there was pain. Mm. Oh, yeah, and because there's uh, pain in the shoulders and the head, one of the vagal nerve exercises that are, that is really powerful and it works a treat is um, turning your head to both sides and feeling just on a scale of 1 to 10 where your neck's sitting. And then pick a side, it doesn't matter which way you go, but then I want you to unfurl your ear. So hold it out to the side and unfurl your ear and get all the way into the inside of your little ear. So roll that backwards and then turn to the other side and unfurl the ear and roll it. So you want to basically turn your head as far to one side as you can and then as far to the other side while unfurling your ear. And what it does is activates the vagus nerve which is all the way from the tip of your skull to your tailbone. So all the way from here down to here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, it's a really... Can you feel the difference, David, when you do that? Oh, 
feels good. It feels and you, good. So you're not holding your head. So you need to turn your head yeah. all the way to one side and then unfurl. And you don't get as nice benefits for the neck unless you turn your head all the way to the side. And then when you do it, and even I put my finger in the ear and give it a little, little bit of a, you know, rub the whole way around. What does that do? It uh, activates the vagus nerve. Mm. So it calms the vagal well, tone. One of the vagus nerves comes up through behind one ear and the other one in the back of the arm. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm. So they go in in different places. Yeah. Okay. Can you feel the difference? Yeah. It Actually, works it's immediately. Um, it did work immediately. So, felt... so any time you've got neck pain, mm. that's a great thing to do. That's actually amazing. I did have... Let's see. What's up, darling? Um, memory okay. is finished and also works. Okay, so you can go next door. So go out this door and into the next door and your drawing stuff is on the table. So I, go next door. I, d I want to know what time is. It's 11 o'clock. We've got three hours till Sophie comes. So go next door and do some drawing. <laughs> squeak, squeak. It's not even Halloween yet. No, that really affects it, It's yeah. amazing, no, that sure. little vagus I'm nerve for the neck. At that. Yeah, it's, it's a fast, easy thing you can do for your vagus nerve for your neck pain for headaches. Mm. Um... Yeah, okay, so now what I want to do, because we've only got a couple of min minutes left, uh, Jessica, so we've sort of got the energy mismatched to bullying and teachers, but now I want to just connect a couple of the pathways from left to right in your brain uh, in relation to bullying and teachers as well. So firstly, I'm going to check your corpus callosum. So this connects the left and right hemispheres of your brain. It's a white muscle mass that connects left and right. Hold out for me. Um, he thought that was at 11 o'clock, but it was 10.57. 10.57. Okay, thanks, sweetie. Now leave the door open. It's too squeaky. Sorry, guys. What are we doing? Okay, so that was trust. So corpus callosum uh, unlocked from left to right hemisphere of the brain. And again, that's because of a pain and punishment circuit. Your unconscious brain doesn't think it's safe to connect your logical and creative hemispheres. It's shutting it down deliberately so that your unconscious brain is in control and keeps you vigilant mm -hmm. all the time. Everything's about protection. Everything the body does for us is about protection. Our body is phenomenal with its healing capabilities and protection capabilities. Sometimes our symptoms just get so uh, ramped up that we can't live a happy, healthy life, and that's when we need to calm our body's processes because we're not about to get eaten by a lion at this moment in time. So trust and trust issues. And hold out. Beautiful. So let's check in relation to bullying, in relation to feeling bullied, in relation to being bullied. And hold out. Yeah, so that's also shutting down the left-right connections of the brain. Mm. And that's switching off the pleasure reward centers in the brain. So it means that your brain has to work harder. So you might be in your house feeling happy, healthy and well with your family and having a good day. If you have to walk outside to do something, even having a nice picnic or going to the park or doing something fun, if the pleasure reward center is switched off, it makes it much harder to release those happy, healthy hormones. So then we can remember a really good day with our family in the wrong part of the brain that remembers only the stressful bit. It doesn't remember any of the good stuff. So in relation to bullying, feeling bullied, yada, 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 all about the bullying. And hold. Beautiful. Now... We're going to check in relation to teachers. In relation to teachers who have been bullies. In relation to teachers who have been authoritarian. In relation to teachers who have not had a heart connection with you. So it's been really hard to go to school under their tutelage. And hold out. 
Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no connection. We're doing corpus callosum. Yeah. And that's escape submission free, so we'll just finish this off. It means you're stuck in one side of your brain. Or that side of the brain is shut down. I suspect not even one side. I suspect more the unconscious and subconscious pathways. Mm. No, but they can be running things and your conscious can't. Yeah, yeah, it. totally. I agree. Right. Okay. In relation to teachers, in relation to any and all challenges with teachers. And how oh, beautiful. Okay, so we've got that up and running. Uh, actually, I'll do a couple more things. I know we're over time now, but I'm going to just get that frontal cortex up and running because this is our problem-solving area. Again, any time your neck is sore, you can run those vagus nerve things. Any time you're not thinking clearly, and we often don't know we're not thinking clearly, by the way, it's not a bad idea to hold your hand on your forehead. And so take what a that deep breath. and take a nice deep breath. And, and what that one. does is brings the blood supply to the frontal cortex, which allows you to think more clearly. Because breath. when we're stressed and anxious and depressed, all our blood supply is in the rear of the brain. So this helps to bring it to the frontal cortex so we can find solutions. The breathing helps get the energy up too. Yeah, beautiful. And the nerve energy. Big deep. So let's check that frontal cortex. In the clear, no. <laughs> so just no energy up there at the moment, Jessica. And again, it's because of a pain and punishment circuit that's saying it's not safe to think clearly. It wants you in the unconscious and subconscious pathways of the brain doing unconscious and subconscious things rather than thinking yourself out of uh, the situation. It doesn't want you finding solutions because it thinks you might get eaten by a lion. And again, hold, oh, beautiful. Okay, so now let's do the same thing again in relation to bullying, in relation to the feeling of being bullied, in relation to being bullied by teachers, in relation to the fear of bullying. And hold. So this is the frontal cortex, so it's different from the corpus callosum. And then we'll just do the teachers and then we'll close off the circuit. But the thing I'm loving about the uh, matured bitter hops extract, uh, Jessica, is that it works on both the vagus nerve as well as the gut. So it increases a whole bunch of your feel good hormones. It increases a whole bunch of nervous system neurotransmitters. So again, frontal cortex in relation to teachers, in relation to being bullied, in relation to fear of teachers, fear of teachers picking on you. Well, we're the real or perceived. Well, that's why the fear's in there. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just like, um, sometimes they can misinterpret it. Oh, totally. Well, Teddy was at Mini Muscles the other day and a couple of the kids were being naughty, so all of the kids had to do 20 burpees. Mm. And I could see the look on Teddy's face that he thought he was in trouble. Because mm. he likes being... How many little fish if you've got a little bit of disability happening? Yeah. And teachers are under so much pressure to keep everyone up even with the curriculum. Yeah. And so if you're a bit different, it can be really hard. And again, hold. Perfect. Okay, Jessica, we'll stack that in. This is a new program for this body now and in the future. The old program for this body is no longer necessary now in the future. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah and amen. Now, you want to be yourself again? Yes, please. Okay, so I am now 100% David. I am now 100% David. And hold. Hold out. <clears throat> and together, hold together. Beautiful. Solid. You're back. I am myself. Okay, so I'll get this uploaded. I'll get this uploaded today and uh, we'll get some information to you. Mwah. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, David. You're champion. Thanks, folks.